Solar Eclipse Every couple of years, the sun blinks out for a few minutes as the moon passes in front of it. This is a solar eclipse. Today, scientists can predict exactly where and when an eclipse will occur and how long it will last. The following animation describes the different types of solar eclipse and how they happen. A total solar eclipse, as seen from the Earth, happens when the moon comes between the Earth and the sun, blocking out the sun's rays. It takes a few hours from start to finish, but the sun is completely blocked for just a few minutes, a period known as totality. A total eclipse is only visible from a small part of the Earth at any one time, and the route the eclipse follows across the Earth is called the path of totality. Animals are known to behave unusually during eclipses. Birds start to roost, and other animals settle down to sleep. This graphic shows how the moon comes between the sun and the earth, as it orbits around the earth. An eclipse can only happen when the sun, earth and moon are perfectly aligned, a situation that occurs just once every few years. The moon casts a partial shadow over most of the earth, called the penumbra, and anyone within this region will see a chunk taken out of the sun. A total eclipse only occurs within the much smaller total shadow, or umbra. An annular solar eclipse occurs when the position of the moon is such that it does not completely cover the disk of the sun. The effect is to leave a ring, or annulus, of sun visible around the edge of the moon. This graphic shows how an annular eclipse occurs in a similar way to a total eclipse, but this time the shadow of the moon does not reach all the way to the Earth. If you look at the diagram, you can see that the umbra, the moon's total shadow, stops short of the Earth. As a result, there is no place on Earth from which the whole of the sun is hidden. Anyone in the middle of the penumbra will see the sun as a ring of light in the sky. A partial solar eclipse happens when the moon does not cover all of the sun but just moves across part of the sun and blocks out just some of its disk. This is the most common type of eclipse occurring once a year or so. At no time during a partial eclipse is all of the sun obscured by the moon. In a partial solar eclipse, the moon does not pass completely across the face of the sun. As this graphic shows, anyone within either the umbra or the penumbra will see part of the sun obscured, but never all of it. Unlike a total solar eclipse, the difference between the umbra and the penumbra is just the amount of the sun obscured, not whether it disappears completely or not. A hybrid solar eclipse occurs when the moon's shadow produces both an annular eclipse and a total eclipse. These do not happen simultaneously. The annular eclipse comes first, followed by the total eclipse. You will not see both types of eclipse at the same point on the Earth's surface. Most locations will see a partial eclipse, some will see an annular eclipse, and elsewhere there will be a total eclipse. A hybrid eclipse occurs when the moon's shadow is at first too short to reach the Earth, but then, as the moon moves, the shadow stretches to produce a total eclipse. As the moon comes between the Earth and Sun for the first time, it is too far away to cast a complete shadow. However, as it continues on its orbit around the Earth, the moon moves closer to the planet's surface and its shadow reaches to the ground. An eclipse can only be seen on a small part of the Earth's surface at any one time because the moon is much smaller than the Earth. The shadow it casts on the Earth, the umbra, is only a few hundred kilometers across and moves along what is known as the path of totality. Astronomers can predict this path of totality with great accuracy.